Cool. Uh, thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Uh, so, uh, most of what I'm going to present is a joint work with uh, my great colleague uh, Javier Garcia Bernardo. Uh, and the title of my presentation is uh, Profit Shifting of Multinational Corporations Worldwide. So, you know, it's, uh, in a way, it's great to be uh, speaking as the last speaker, so uh, I'll be uh, skipping. Uh, much of the stuff, but the number of reasons why we care about this uh, specific type of tax avoidance, and uh, one of them that I will discuss in more detail is the lower government revenues, countries worldwide, but it's also the uneven uh, level playing field of uh, companies that do engage in this tax avoidance and that don't. It might also lead to uh, people perceiving globalization that might have some other beneficial effects as inequitable. And of course, uh, Allow me to mention, as, as was already uh, mentioned today, that uh, sustainable development goals, uh, illicit financial flows, is uh, one of the uh, targets. And for those interested, why profit shifting is uh, illicit financial flow and uh, how it can be measured, uh, we, we have a, a book out with Oxford University Press that you can learn even more uh, than in today's uh, presentation. But to the research that I'm going to present, what our paper, where, where, where the most value added is, is that we provide evidence on what specific countries are the origin and destinations of profit shifting. So, uh, for example, there are uh, detailed studies of profit shifting, such as uh, Nadine's paper for one country. There are other uh, cross-country studies which uh, maybe have 50 or 60 uh, countries, usually not more. So here we wanted to look at, you know, basically all the countries here in Africa and other continents and see how prevalent profit shifting is in those countries. And also specifically to which countries uh, the profits these multinationals uh, shift to. So that, that's kind of, you know, our uh, focus. We have also to methodological, methodological contributions, so country by country reporting was mentioned already as a one transparency uh, regulation introduced over the past uh, 10 years. For us researchers, it means uh, we, have, uh, we, 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 we have a great uh, design for research con discontinuity design, but that's another paper. We also, it, it also created data, which is the case of this paper that we can uh, employ. And I was, you know, glad to see uh, that uh, IMF uses uh, in, in their uh, evaluation of uh, PIL2, OECD does the same. So that seems to be agreement, uh, pending an agreement that country by country reporting data provides some of the best information that we can have uh, for uh, multinationals. The, and around the time this paper came out first, we were some of the first to use this data, but kind of every presentation that I have of this paper, it gets outdated, uh, of course, because there are many more papers uh, coming out with, it, with this kind of uh, data. And we are only, as I will discuss, using aggregate data. We don't have access for this paper for the firm level data. The methodological contribution is about the relationship between reported profits and tax rate. So most papers in the profit shifting literature uh, have modeled this using only linear uh, function. Then uh, the question came again about 10 years ago, is it really only linear? So we have the quadratic function and the, the question is how nonlinear uh, this relationship is. We argued that it's extremely nonlinear and that you should use extremely nonlinear functions, such as a logarithmic one, uh, to model uh, the relationship. And we structured the paper around four uh, questions. So how big is the profit shifting? What are the tax events to which uh, the profits are shifted? Uh, are the differences in profit shifting according to where the multinational is headquartered? And how are various countries impacted and are the low-income countries hit, uh, hit uh, more strongly than other countries. Uh, and this, uh, you know, to preview the results, it seems that uh, 
low-income countries tend to be more hardly hit, although the results are not as conclusive as uh, they might be. There's uh, many papers, including uh, people in this room, that we build on, but for the sake of time, I'll uh, skip the discussion of the literature. So let me start with the, a bit more detailed discussion of the country-by-country country reporting data. So there's some information in the aggregated country-by-country uh, country reporting data, I will say CBCR, uh, for around 190 uh, countries. What's good that, there are, that there's one data set uh, for profit making and another data set for profit and loss making. So that allows us to use one of them for estimation of the backward looking effective tax rates and the other data set uh, for uh, the rest of the analysis. In this paper, we're really interested in the wide range of countries. So we end up, you know, if you go to the appendix of our paper, we end up with estimates for around 200 uh, countries. But it has its cost. So we, we, we do some uh, data imputations using Orbis and other data sources in addition to the CBCR to be able to have meaningful information about so many countries worldwide while only some of them uh, report uh, the CBCR reports. But that's kind of the, that's our headline results. But kind of for the methodology purposes, but also to have more uh, credible data uh, source, we also, in, in one section of the paper, uh, we present only the results using the data for US headquarter multinationals. That has the benefit that uh, we have more confidence uh, in the data, and still we, we cover around 30% of uh, multinationals uh, profits uh, worldwide. So we have these two parts of the paper. And the CBCR data, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phrase that I like and has been used at this conference a lot. So is it a half, uh, is, is the glass half full or half empty? So which, which take do you want from me on the CBCR data? So I'll, I'll be the optimistic one. So it's a glass half full, although of course, you know, there are uh, imperfections, but still we seem to know much more about the geogra geographical coverage of multinationals than we knew before. And now with the higher quality data forthcoming and uh, more data becoming public and shared with researchers, we every year we know uh, more and more. One of the technical details around the country by country reporting data that, that I would like to discuss in detail is the double counting uh, that is unfortunately uh, present there. So relatively recently after uh, the I think even before the data was released publicly for the first time, uh, we heard that there's going to be likely some double counting because there hasn't been clear guidance on uh, reporting uh, for the holding companies of uh, profits in, in, in the data. So we were aware of it. Uh, I personally, you know, understood it was there. I didn't expect uh, that it would be so large as we found out in another paper uh, with Javier and Gabriel Zuckman, where we may use of the US data, uh, having, uh, having the availability of uh, data for US multinationals from various data sources. So we especially uh, rely on uh, Compustat. And we find that uh, around half of the profits of US multinationals is uh, double counted. So it's, you know, you know, I changed my priors. I thought it would be uh, less. So we feel it's important to correct for double counting in the data. And we do so using several uh, sources in uh, the worldwide analysis too. So we use corrections for specific countries, for example. So Netherlands and Sweden and other countries issued kind of corrections for double counting. So we use that. We get rid of the stateless income. We use the, our correction from the other paper uh, for the United States. And so we want to make uh, the paper kind of more conservative, kind of, you know, hopefully uh, realistic. But we can't be certain uh, with uh, the 
corrections if we are not overdoing it or whether we are uh, getting rid of the double counting in the right uh, places. And there's just one uh, table from the other table uh, from the other paper. And we basically, we, we, use comp we compare CompuStat and CBCR and try to arrive at the same sample of uh, companies, so adjusting the CompuStat to arrive at a similar set of firms as should be reporting in uh, the CBCR. And then, uh, the, for example, most of the profits double counted seem to be in, uh, in the United States for the U.S. headquarter company. So it's uh, here the numbers above. Uh, 50%. But, you know, it's half full, as I say. So I want to inform you about the double counting because I think, you know, this is a real issue that needs to be addressed. But it's also good news that the, the kind of the reporting guidelines were not clear. We knew that five years ago. And so the guidelines have been fixed. And uh, companies have been reporting according to the corrected guidelines already for 2020. So when uh, the data are published for 2020, which should be any months now uh, from the OECD, uh, we should, in theory, it should at least not suffer from this specific problem that has been identified. There might be other problems outstanding, but let's see. Uh, it's also, uh, there are other initiatives uh, Companies are sharing their country-by-country uh, -country reports. European uh, Union has uh, mandated that uh, many companies will need to publish parts of their uh, reports uh, publicly. So let's see, there'll be other uh, improvements in the CBCR data. So I remain upbeat about the usefulness of the data. But let me move on to the methodology, which is uh, relatively standard in this literature. and. Um, presented uh, a couple of weeks ago with Jim Hines uh, present in the audience and, you know, uh, still referring to the Hines and Rice after 30 years. Uh, so I don't know if the paper was so good or we were kind of partly stuck in, in the literature. You know, I remain, I can, I'll keep that as an open uh, question. So the standard model uh, use so-called text semi-elasticity model where we have profits on the left-hand side, and uh, we, we try to estimate what the profits should be using capital and labor, and then whatever is picked up by the tax rate uh, is likely caused by uh, profit shifting. So it's about the profits book and uh, tax rate uh, in simplicity. And as I said, the linear specification has been used in most studies that have used this specification, uh, but already heights and rise and it was highlighted again uh, powerfully by Tim Dowd and his co-authors in a general public economics paper in 2017. The quadratic uh, makes a lot of sense. So, uh, so that, 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 that's an improvement that most papers now do account for the nonlinearity in one way or another. What we're saying in this paper, the quadratic is really improvement on the linear, but we feel it's not enough and one of the way of uh, to reason this is to look at this graph where we have the cbcr data effective tax rate on the horizontal axis and profit per employee on the vertical axis and uh, this is a logarithmic scale on the on the vertical axis so companies reporting profits in Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Isle of Man, Jersey, are extremely profitable and they all uh, have uh, extremely low effective tax rates. So there are no countries that would be extremely profitable and uh, have uh, higher uh, tax rates or uh, vice versa. So there seems to be uh, something extreme uh, in the nonlinearity between uh, the profits an effective tax rate and one way uh, to go about this is to use instead of the uh, quadratic uh, function to use the logarithmic function which we do in this paper but we also present all the results for uh, all other functional forms including 
uh, linear, quadratic, and logarithmic. Then if we take the case of uh, Jersey, which in the data has uh, the ETR of almost zero, it makes a lot of difference which of these, uh, which of these uh, functions uh, you use. The difference wouldn't be so big for countries uh, that have higher uh, effective tax rates where the lines, estimated lines, are much uh, closer. What this means for the distribution of, uh, of, of, of the profit shifting. So let, let's look at the first line, the jersey with, with the lowest effective tax rate. So uh, we have done logarithmic quadratic linear, the last three columns. So the more you take into account the possibility of the nonlinearity, the higher amount of profits reported in the tax haven are labeled as profit shifted there. So it's 99% uh, logarithmic, 89% uh, quadratic, and 55% uh, uh, linear. So that's what makes it uh, different that uh, if we use linear, still most profits uh, in Jersey are labeled as profit shifting, but it's a much higher share if we use quadratic or logarithmic. So, unfortunately, as far as I know, we can't say for certain what's the real profit shifting. So it's hard to, you know, we, we, we do make a case that, you know, the non-linearity non is extreme and that we should use logarithmic or other similar function. Uh, but uh, I don't see that, that there will be a good, uh, um, good uh, some, something that we could strongly uh, compare it uh, with. Uh, these are just, so I'm moving to the, so this was based on the US data, now I'm moving uh, to conclude using the OECD data where we sum up the results uh, according to the ETR and the results are similar as with the Jersey example before. This is the way to present all the uh, results. So on the left hand side is the countries from which profits are shifted and on the right hand side you have uh, the tax havens uh, Cayman Islands, Netherlands uh, being uh, some of the uh, biggest ones, and then uh, this is uh, uh, the, 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 this is uh, a graph showing that the lower income countries tend to lose uh, more uh, as a share uh, of their corporate income tax revenue, and th that's the same uh, for uh, African uh, countries. My last slide is about putting this in uh, the perspective of other studies uh, that exist here. So in this paper, we put the total of profit shifting at around 900 uh, billion US dollar annually, and uh, the revenue loss is around 200 uh, billion US dollar. But now there are studies, so when, we, when I presented for the first time sometime about two years ago, it was the highest estimate among the list. Uh, but uh, here now you, you have some uh, studies that are having higher numbers and so it's kind of broadly comparable, to, you know, it depends on what, what kind of take you, you, you want to take, if there are differences across the studies or if they point uh, to this uh, being a big problem. Thank you and looking forward to the discussion.